Church of Christ, we'd like to welcome you for another Bible class here at the Pierce Street Church of Christ. Here are some of the beautiful pictures of some of the students who have been baptized here at Pierce Street. And we'd like to welcome you to our Bible class Sunday morning, October, in the month of October 2021. This is our Bible class this morning, and we'd like to welcome you to the Pierce Street Church of Christ. Join us on a weekly basis as we encourage the youth here at Pierce Street and the Rayfield School to follow the life of Christ. Father, we are so grateful and thankful, God, to your, to your eternal blessing, God, and for keeping us throughout the Bible says, when the number of the disciples were multiplied, when they begin to grow, when the when the disciples, the Christians begin to grow, there arose a murmuring of the, the, the Grecians against the Hebrews because the widows were neglected in the daily administration. See, back then, women were not allowed to be in uh, in, in the assembly, um, and you had you had a quarrel or argument between the Hebrews and and and, and, and the Grecians and the, and um, and then the twelve the, then the twelve apostles uh, then the twelve called the uh, called the, the apostles and they called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said it is not reason that we should leave the word of God uh, to serve tables. Okay, we, we, we should not, we should not um, uh, step away from and overlook this situation. So that's why they call the disciples, they say, I'll tell you what, let, let us come together and, 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 and talk about this. And, and let us uh, divide the work or let's make it more easier how, how it would make more sense. Because we, the word of God is not for men alone, it is for both men and women. It's for everybody, okay? Um, and, 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 and you don't want to be one-sided about it. Wherefore, brethren, look you amongst you seven men of honest report. So what they did was they discussed it. They said, listen, I'll tell you how we could fix this. Um, which one of these, which out of, the, out of these men, out of the group of all of these men, choose seven of them. Why seven? Because seven is usually God's number of perfectiveness. Okay? So we want a perfect number and according to what God considers it's be really perfect. If we know that well why is that well why why is number seven is, is God's perfect number? Because what? Yeah. Because what? Why is I listen carefully now. Listen carefully. Please listen carefully. Why is Seven, the number seven, is considered God's perfect number. What did He do that 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 He considered that to be a perfect? When was that? No, you, you're not listening. You're not listening. Don't 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 say anything unless you think first, please. We we need everybody to be on the. Uh, just don't just throw something out. Think about what I'm saying. What was it that God did that was so great? What was it that God did that was so great that it that it, 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 it became perfect on the number seven? Anyone? Okay, let me help you a little bit. Let me help you just a little bit. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. God did what? God, in Genesis, God did what? Mm. He did what? Mm. What about the earth? Mm. What about the earth? What about the earth? He what? He did what to the earth? He created he created he created he created his world he created his world 
Genesis, pizza, everything about the, in the beginning uh, was the word of God. And the word was with God. And, and, and everything that, they, that God created, he created in seven days. That's why that number seven is, called, is considered perfect because once he was through doing everything within seven days and he said, it is perfect. Genesis chapter one, Genesis chapter two. So everything that God had touched or made, he made it perfect. So as it relates to this conversation here, um, so they selected seven men of honest report and they were full of the Holy Spirit and had wisdom whom may appoint over this business. In other words, they, they were given a job, a duty, a function. Uh, can somebody close that back door, please? Um, they were given a job, a duty, a function to, to, um, to be over the affairs or the issues that are going on. But we give ourselves continuously to prayer and to the ministering of the word. So you, you, you see that the, the disciples who were the main, the main core, when they saw that there was a problem that could become a, eventually become a bigger problem, they say, no, we, we, we need to resolve this. And that's why they chose seven honest men of good report to be able to speak, to be able to be, to overlook the ministry as it relates to these women that they was not allowed to come into the assembly but that they would still be able to receive the word of God and because of that um, uh, the, 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 the disciples um, they continued in praying you know they had a they, they, their job was to pray and how important it is that uh, you see the Bible always talks about prayer in so many ways because the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. You ought to pray always. Amen. And, and in every situation, you want to pray. And, 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 and to minister the word of God. That's why they were praying, studying, and keep, and keep giving the word of God. And the more you hear the word of God, the better you become. Uh, and the same pleased the whole multitude. And they, they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, the Holy Ghost, and Philip. Uh, and, and Patras and, and uh, Nakar and Timon and Parmimus and Nicholas and Proselyte Pus of Antioch whom they had said before the apostles and when they had prayed they laid their hands on them and the word of God increased and the numbers of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. So, the beauty of the beauty of the beauty of our giving enables God's word to continue to go forward. Okay, and and that's supporting not just your local congregation, not just your local congregation, not just this, not just Pier Street. Um, Hollandale, uh, 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 Hope, or uh, uh, North Dade, or uh, uh, West Palm Beach, if they got something that they're doing over there and, and, and we hear about it and, and, and we may not be able to attend one of the situ one of the functions that they're having, but if they say, okay, well, this is how much it is and we can't go, we could always send them the money, you know, because you're giving them, you're giving them your grace. You're giving them your consideration, your love. You're saying to them, hey, um, you're doing a good work. You know, we're getting ready, we're getting ready to, to engage into uh, next month as the, day, as the time is approaching quickly. We're getting ready to do um, our, our, our Thanksgiving drive. You know, and I would like very much to have all the congregations them to support. They're not only financially, I want them to also support uh, physically. You know, that means I need their hands to help us out. Because this is a lot of work, you know. And you know you know my project. My project is feeding the multitude. That's that that's my project. That's a lot of people to feed. You know, but 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 it could be done. It could be done because uh we are many. We are we we we, we, we may be we are mighty and strong, 
when we come together yeah. to do the will and the way of the Lord. Um, so, and then we look at um, we look at what Paul is teaching uh, in, in the book of Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter eleven, Second Corinthians chapter eleven, and and, and um, uh, verse seven. Uh, verse number, verse 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And I'm going to read from verse number 15. Therefore, it is no greater thing if his ministers, if, if, his, if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. I say again, let no man think of me a fool. If otherwise yet as a fool will receive me, that I may boast myself a little. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolish in the confidence of boasting. Uh, Wait a minute. Uh, I think I was going to pass the part. I you know. I'm sorry. Uh, I started reading from the wrong, wrong verse. Um, I just realized that. Um, um, okay. Um, for Paul is saying, yeah. For Paul is saying here in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 5. He said, for I suppose I was not a not a wit behind the very chiefest of apostles. Um, uh, but through, but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. Uh, Paul was very firm in the things that he said. Whatever he said, he was very firm to say what, he, what, what was on his mind uh, relating to the word of God. Um, but he did that because he had knowledge. He understood the reason why he needed to say what he needed to say. But we have been through made manifest amongst you in all things. Have I committed any offense in abasing myself that you might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? So Paul is saying that um, uh, in, as much as I'm going to speak this the word of God boldly. I'm speaking the word of God boldly so that you can uh, can understand what I am saying. And I'm not saying this in a way to sugarcoat the word of God. He's not trying to make the word of God to, to sound so good and sweet. And you need to be able to have an understanding in the word of God. And he did this freely. He did this freely. He didn't go out there looking to receive a paycheck. He said, I rob other churches taking wages of them to do you service. When it comes to our when it comes to uh to us speaking the truth, and we gotta be able to speak the truth and the fullness of the truth. Because the purpose and the reason why we are, are, are living and wanting to be more like Christ is so that we will continue to lift up Christ. That's the purpose and the reason. You want to lift up Christ. You want to lift up Christ to the fullness so that all will know and come to the full understanding that Christ is the reason and the purpose of our Call to service God. It's, 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 it's the most simplest understanding that the purpose and the reason why I became a Christian is so I could be able to follow in the footsteps of Christ and that I can worship God in the spirit as well as in the truth. Um, so, it's important that we, as Christians today, uh, have the mindset that when you come in to worship, you come with a heart ready to give. Give up your time, give up your attention, 
Uh, and most definitely come ready to give a gift, come ready to give up your money. Because hey, it ain't belong to you. No matter what somebody told you, just know I'm telling you the truth. It ain't belong to you. As hey, a matter of fact, I don't see nobody name written on not, not one dollar bill, but just those men that wanted to put their name on the dollar bill because they were presidents. Okay? So the money in your pocket says what? And even the president that we know that is called, if it is George Washington, uh, 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 Jackson, uh, Hamilton, uh, you know, we, we, we know those names because their faces is on those dollar bills. But, but even that day, even though they, we see their faces on the dollar bill, yeah, we, we, you, you see it said Franklin's, but guess what? It says right there, in God, what? We trust. That means I don't want none of this. I don't want none of this. Believe me, I'm telling you, I don't want none of this. Okay? It belongs to God. In God, we trust. It don't have Anthony name written on no dollar bill. And I'm glad it don't. Because you could take it to the bank and you ain't going to get paid. All right? You could try to spend it and it ain't going to get you nowhere. Amen. All right, so so you need to have you been on. I don't see Chris Gooden name written on no check. I know, I know, I know, I know, um, no dollar bill. I don't see none of our name written on no dollar bill. Because if you, your name on that, then it's your money. Yeah, you the only, only thing you could buy with it is whatever you want with what. Yeah, well, that's I don't know how far it's gonna get you, but it's the truth. You know, it it, it got to go through a process. And even through that process, it still don't belong to you. So why hold on to it? Give freely. You will receive freely if you give freely. Therefore, how should the church... Uh, now, now, that's, now, that, now this is a question here I'm going to pose to everybody before we close our Bible class. Um, but... Uh, When we, when it relates to, and this is a really good question because uh, we need to understand that the church is not supported by, um, uh, the, the church is supported by the members, okay? The members is what supports the church. The members are the ones that that, that lay aside or they they, they, they they give God a offering okay that's your gift and they support it that way um, we don't go and do a big sale in the name of the church you don't go and sell something and put the church name and say I'm selling for the church of Christ I don't go and say I'm selling barbecue chicken and ribs for the church of Christ because that's begging the folks to do something and you trying to give them something for something. When it comes to the word of God, we, we, we hear the word of God so that you may do all things with a free freeness of heart. Okay, that means that you come to give. Wherever you gain your money, don't raise the money in the name of the church. Whatever you do on your own terms, if you're doing a bake sale, Whatever you want, is, it could be big sale for whatever it is. Uh, it's keeping big sales. You know, keeping them have the name saying that it's for the Church of Christ. He said, I'm the one that's doing it. I done went and bought my, my flour, my sugar, my eggs, and, and I'm whipping up some cookies here, and, and I'm gonna bake me some nice cookies, and I'm gonna sell these sugar cookies for, for, for whether it's five cents or a dollar. But once he done made his money, Whatever he says other than that he wanna to give, to, to give to the church, that's you giving it. But you're not raising money in the name of the church. Let's see, a lot of this we see the world do. We have in the base seal and we got a car wash seat, car wash um, thing going for this church. We are not in this, we are not in the business to go out like that. Whatever you do, you do it as you do it as a job. In other words, you can create yourself a job. There's nothing wrong with doing uh, bake sales. There's nothing wrong with selling some ribs and chicken and french fries or 
whatever you want to say. Ain't nothing wrong with saying it. Do that on your own terms. Amen. Without using the word or the name of Christ as you're doing it to, to make money for the church. And in, in the endeavors of your mind is that you're creating a, a, a means to make some money because you're spending money out of your pocket. In other words, you're taking what God gave you, a talent. You're taking the talent that God gave you and you allow it to multiply because you're putting effort into it. And then God brings these people to you and they buy in that stuff. You just made, you probably spent $20, but now you just made 200. So God, uh, God increase your efforts. God increase your efforts to where now the 20 now turned you into 200. Mm -hmm. Now you could more than give God $50 and say, when God, you so good, you better to me than I am to myself. I'm gonna give you fifty dollars out of what I what what I make is I you know whatever it is you spend twenty you make two hundred you give God fifty you you you, you got hundred and fifty dollars in your pocket it motivates you that you could do more yeah. yes sir okay let's say they have well in their world they don't car wash they're not giving them money to the church they keep that money in and 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 again and again yeah like I gotta say. Because we have our mindset to do something one way, and then as soon as you start seeing that money rise up, you're happy. And the first thing you think about, well, I was going to give God 50, but now I'm going to give him 10. You know, he should be glad I'm done. Do not give God if your heart is not right. Just don't give, period. Because God already know when you, before you're going to give, whether or not you're giving from the indebtedness of your heart, or if you're not. So if you already planted in your mind that I'm going to give God whatever it is because you put the work in, yes. then you need to stick to what you say. Yes. Okay, if not, then just don't even add God in the picture because that's the reason why I'm saying this. You know, can you raise money and give to the church? Yes. Yeah. Yes, ain't nobody stopping you from doing that. Yeah. You're doing it because you, you work to put that money together. Mm -hmm. So... That's what you're giving. You're giving unto God a blessing because God allowed you to have the ability and the skill to do the work. So now that you took the talent that multiplied, that's just like the one that God gave, the master gave his three servants. He gave one, one talent. He gave the other one, uh, two talent. The other one, he gave five. The five, one that received five when they made 10. So he doubled that. The one that got two made four. He doubled that. The one that got one hit it and say, well, I, I knew you were hard, you, that, you, that, that you work hard for your money and you gave it to me, so I hit it so that when you ask me for it, I can give it back to you. And he said, you are wicked. He said, you are wicked and a slothful servant. That means you just wasted all my time giving you some money. Instead of you doing good with the money, you took it and you hid it. What good is it that you're gonna hide your talent? doesn't matter what little bit of talent God gave you. God gave you something to be effective with it. Yes. Put it to good use. Yes. So that it could bring you some more money. Yes. And when it does bring you more, then you could give more. Right. We need to see that. When God puts you in a position to be blessed, it's for you to get more, to do more. Yes. Okay? It is not for you to keep it to yourself and forget God. Because I see a lot of people do that. When God blessing them, they turn the other way. But who gave it to you? Who gave you the strength to get up and to do what you did to make that money? It's only God. So don't be on fear and don't be unrighteous in your own ways. You got to be ready to do right unto God. And that's how we need to see this full picture. One second. Uh, that's how we need to see this full picture as Christians with the attitude and the mentality that when you come to give you give with the utmost of your heart yes the Bible says it, 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 it's not according to what a man has but what a man has not so let him give not sparingly or grudgingly but God so loving a cheerful giver yeah. because I'm giving God because of love yes that's like you just tell them by giving. 
Good question, Fred. Very good question. Yeah. Very, very good question. Fred just said, well, can, 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 can you give on a pastor's anniversary? Well, uh, to answer that question, yes. Amen. Yes. Um, because what you, what you just stated, um, Fred, and, and thank God for the Holy Spirit for um, giving, giving that to you, is that we've been here five years. We've been five years established the Church of Christ at Pier Street, and we have we have yet to literally have a a, a a pastor's appreciation. Okay, in other words, thanking God for the man that uh, the man serving that He has blessed us with here at Pier Street. Um, uh, I believe we had a small event where we had uh, one of the, one of the ministers that I, I can't recall which one of them is at this moment. That actually came and did a uh, that, that that spoke uh, for 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 me um, on that behalf. But we we are looking forward. I mean, in, the sp in spite of the fact that we are still on the need of the, the, the situation of the COVID, but we are looking forward to one day being able to have a pastor's appreciation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and 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 I have given time and point. Um, uh, you know, you you it's usually like two offerings that's that, that's connected. One for the general worship, one for the minister, and they do that because you're showing the minister how much you love him. You know, so that that's the way that you go about doing. But yes, the answer to that is that um, you can uh, definitely um, set aside on that time, and that's when you give. As and it's not always, it's not about money. Because uh, sometimes it's gifts, you know, sometimes it's gifts that they bring, whatever they secretly find out, uh, what is it that we would like, can we buy for him and give him as a gift? That can come from everybody or it can come from each individual, whatever gift that may be, but but that's just, that's just a general sense of knowing. Because if you love someone and you appreciate them for what they're doing, uh, blessing them is only the right thing to do, okay? All right, so again, before we close out, let's keep in mind that all items of the worship is very important to every spiritual Christian, okay? Because you're spiritually minded. Your mind is set on things which are above, not things which are beneath, okay? Our mind is not fixated on money, but our mind needs to be, our mind needs to be steadfast in the gospel of truth. That right. when you come to, 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 to worship, you come to participate in the five items of worship. Yeah. You know, singing, uh, preaching or teaching, uh, uh, the, the communion, uh, the, the, the giving, and, and, and prayer. Yeah. All right? We need to be able to understand these are the only five steps that the Bible declared. This is what, the, what we could read about in the Bible. Even the early churches, um, they did that exactly that way. And that's if we are still doing that, to this, doing it today, in the 21st century, that means we're following the only examples that we have. Anything that's added to that, you're adding too much. Anything that you're taking away from that, you're taking away from the Word of God. Yeah. So we don't want to add nor to subtract, but we want to make sure we stay steady within the Word of God so that God's Word would continue to increase, multiply, and to continue to help us to grow to be better Christians. And by that, we will be developing more and more the attributes of Christ to become the children of God that God has called us to be. All right? May God continue to bless you on this morning. And I uh, consider yourself dismissed. You've been in a good class. We we'll prepare to get ourselves ready for the worship.
Good day, Rayfield family. Here are your weather forecasts for this week. Monday, considerable cloudiness, high 78. Winds, north at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tuesday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 79. Winds, northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Wednesday, more clouds than sun, high 81. Winds, east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Thursday, scattered showers and thunderstorms, high 78. Winds, east at 10 to 20 miles per hour, chance of rain, 50%. Friday, showers in the morning, with isolated thunderstorms arriving in the afternoon, high 78. Winds north northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour, chance of rain 40%. These are your weather forecasts for this week. Keep your umbrella handy just in case we have rain in the forecast. Make sure that you keep updated with the latest weather forecast as it will change from time to time by either watching it from your television or listening to your radio, or from any devices that carries their weather app. Thank you for tuning in, and may you have a productive week. See you later. Now stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, say. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched we're so gallantly streaming and the
You may be seated. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Thus be the reading of God's word coming from the book of Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell it therein. For he had founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his souls unto vanity, nor sworn deceitful, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seeketh him, that he that seeketh thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up thy heads, O ye gates. And, ye, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. <coughs> Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory <coughs> shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory, Selah. Join me in a word of prayer at this moment. <coughs> Merciful Father God, we give thanks, praise, honor, and glory, God, to your holy and divine name, God, for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will continue to do in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you this day, dear Lord, for all of your great blessing. We thank you, God, for your mighty works. We pray, God, that you will continue to bless your people. Continue to be a blessing unto them in their incoming and their outgoing. Continue, Father God, to, to bless each and every one of us, God, as we struggle to this time. <clears throat> and in the seasons of, of our despair, Father God, may we continue to lean upon you and to call upon your holy name, Father God that you may grant us the blessing that we stand in need of. For we know not any other God but you to trust and obey. Father God, we pray, God, that you will continue to heal the sick, continue to heal the shedding. Bless all them, God, that are standing in need of prayer right now, Father God. Continue to bless each and every one in the mighty name of Jesus. For this we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Everybody else's testimony about beside myself. Tell them you've been so. I see you, Betty Jackson. Been so good. 
good to see you, girl. You've been so good. You've been so been so good. We are voting for our clips representative. Our president, our vice president, our treasurer, and our secretary. We have a right to vote. He has done it again. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I shall not be moved. Good morning, family. It is time for a conversation with God. It's so good to see each and every one of you who are joining us today. Hope, trust, and pray that you have been having a blessed day so far. And if it has not been the best of days, know that it will get better. You just hold to God's unchanging hand. Don't let the tempest that's raging move you. Just hold to God's unchanging hand and you will get through this. On this day that the Lord has made, uh, has allowed us to see, uh, we, are, we wake up with gratitude in our hearts. And as always, I want to say thank you to uh, each and every one of you, those of you who join a conversation with God every day, Monday through Friday, uh, for this very special time of prayer and devotion. And I also want to give a shout out and a thank you to each one of you who shared this ministry uh, with others, those of you who have been inviting your, uh, your friends, your family, and others uh, to take part in this blessing. I want you to know we definitely appreciate each and every one of you. And I encourage and invite you to continue to share a conversation with God uh, with as many people as you know. Uh, because we are called to, to share and to spread the word of God. And that's what we're striving to do through the privilege and the power of this medium. And so please, uh, let's continue to invite our friends and family to join us for a conversation with God. Also, I want to encourage those of you who are joining us today. Uh, what we do here in a conversation with God, we spend some time in the word and we spend some time in prayer. And so if you have any prayer requests, we invite and encourage you to please go ahead and leave your prayer requests in the comment section uh, so that the prayer warriors and I might be able to pray with you and pray for you. So if you need prayer, uh, you're requesting something from the Lord for yourself uh, on behalf of someone else, please let us know in the comment section so that we might be able to pray uh, for you. Uh, with that being said, we're going to the book this morning. I saw some of you have already written that. You said, bring me the book. So let's go to the book this morning. We're going to Revelation chapter 2. Uh, verses 12 through 17. Revelation chapter 2, 
verses 12 through 17. Hopefully you can follow along with us as I read aloud. That is Revelation chapter 2, verses 12 through 17. If you have it, say amen. I think I heard somebody say amen. The Bible reads, And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which has the short sword with two edges. I know thy works, where you dwell, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days where in Antipas my faithful martyr was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate, repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the, of the hidden manna, and will give him a, of the, a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saying, saving he that receiveth it. Family and friends, our title for today's devotion is Stand Firm. Stand Firm. Just like the song we were just singing, I shall not be moved. Stand firm. Say it with your mouth. Stand firm. Write it in the comment section. Stand firm and make sure you keep it in your heart. Stand firm. Brothers and sisters, I, I have a question that each one of us is going to have to seriously evaluate ourselves on. This is a call for uh, self-examination. And the question is, are you a compromising Christian? Are you a compromising Christian? As we have been studying, Jesus has been uh, sending letters to various congregations of the churches of Christ here in uh, the book of Revelation. We've seen the words that he uh, expressed to the congregation at Ephesus, and we've seen the letter that he sent to the members of the church at Smyrna. Today, he writes a letter. He sends a message uh, to the Christians that were members of the church at Pergamos. And as we have already established, God knows everything that's going on in this world, including what's going on in the Lord's church. And in these letters, we see that the church is undergoing a spiritual health evaluation. And he is evaluating each one of these congregations and the members that are a part of those congregations in order to give them a, a, a spiritual checkup a spiritual report on their spiritual condition. And every now and then, we all need a spiritual checkup. We need to know from the Lord, how am I doing spiritually? And if there's anybody that's going to be honest with you, the Lord is going to be just that. And so the Lord is giving a health checkup to the members of the Church of Christ or the, the, church, the church of Christ at Pergamos. And he's saying to these Christians, I know you. I know your works. I know that you are constant in your faith. He says, I know where you live and you dwell where Satan's seat is. Now, the church at Pergamos was in the midst of a uh, metropolitan city, and it was like the uh, the capital where they had a lot of the, the Roman gods, the, the idols that people were, uh, worshipped. And so a lot of those Christians were surrounded uh, by temptations each and every day and the temptation to compromise the truth of God's word. 
And so Jesus said, these people, you dwell where Satan's seat is. That's really where all that idolatry and all that false doctrine and all those things that really keep people from knowing the truth and the living God, it comes out of that city. And so you are in a, a hotbed, Christians at Pergamos. You're surrounded by temptation every day and the pressure to conform. He said, you, you dwell there, even though you're in the midst of that. You hold fast my name, he says in verse 13, and has not denied my faith, even in those days when Antipas, my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwells. In other words, you're still holding on to the faith. Even though one of your brothers in Christ was, was killed because of his stand uh, in the faith, because he refused to deny his faith in Jesus Christ, and he was killed, yet you're still holding on. So you're surrounded. You're surrounded by all this evil, all this idolatry, yet you, as a Christian, you're still holding on. And Jesus is saying you, you are commended for that. And I love when Jesus writes these letters, he always starts with a, a commendation. He commends the church, the Christians there, for the good things or the right things that they're doing. And I know the Lord says the same thing to us today. Many of us are, are faithful members of the Lord's church and we have been committed to the faith. And God says, you are to be commended for that. But then when you get to Revelation 2.14, Jesus comes around and says, even though you have not denied my faith, I have a few things against thee. You see, brothers and sisters, the problem is that the Christians at Pergamos, some of them were guilty of compromise. They were compromising the truth of God's word. The word compromise means to make concessions or to uh, or make accommodations regarding a set of standards or rules. And there are sometimes in some situations when, when compromise is necessary. It's good, as a matter of fact. You think about any marriage, oftentimes husbands and wives, when they don't necessarily agree on the, some, on the same thing, sometimes they meet in the middle in order to have peace in that marriage and peace in that home. And sometimes compromise is good. Sometimes uh, compromise is right. Sometimes compromise is necessary. But there are times when compromise is not good there are times when compromise is not right, especially when it comes to the commands of God. Brothers and sisters, we need to understand that God does not condone compromising his commandments. And as children of God, even though we are surrounded every day by the pressure to uh, conform to this world and, and to compromise when it comes to, to the word of God, we have to determine in, my, in our spirit that no matter what pressure the world puts upon me, I'm going to stand firm. I shall not be moved. We need to understand that God expects us to be obedient to his word. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 32 and 33, God gives a commandment to his people when they were to go into those strange lands and, and living in the midst of an ungodly nation. Turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 32 and 33. Look at the words of, of God to his people. He says in Deuteronomy 5, verse 32, you shall observe to do therefore as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn uh, aside to the right hand or to the left hand. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you that you may live and that it may be well with you and that you may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. In other words, God is saying to his people, you gotta stand firm. You gotta be obedient to my word. You have to hold on and be obedient to my commands. I know you're going to be surrounded by people and you're surrounded by people each and every day uh, of, of your life. People that don't believe what you believe. People that, you know, don't 
uh, believe in God and don't believe in morality and the, and the truth that is found in God's word, you're surrounded by that every single day. But God says you got to stand firm on my word. You got to be obedient. Don't go to the right or to the left. You got to stay true to what God has said. God does not condone compromising his commands. But you know what? Even though God does not condone compromising, <laughs> as Christians, we face the pressure to compromise when it comes to God's word every day. And brothers and sisters, that's what happened to the church at Pergamos. Sometimes we are pressured to conform by our family. Sometimes we're pressured to conform by, by our peers, our society, on our job, even the lust that had that rage within our own bodies, our own flesh, tempts us to compromise when it comes to the word of God. And even though we may stand firm uh, in, in certain areas, Jesus said you got some room for improvement. There's some areas where you have not been as firm, you have not been as true to God's word as, as God would like for you to be. And you have to be honest with yourself. And there are often times, you know, when we find ourselves compromising, usually it's for a reason. Sometimes we compromise out of fear. We don't want to, uh, to be rejected or we don't want to lose this job or we don't want to. We are afraid of what people are going to think about us or, or say about us. They may call us old fashioned and they may say, oh, you uh, a church uh, person or you holier than now who you think you are. And so you begin to compromise out of fear. And I remember some, somewhere where Jesus said, don't fear those who are able to destroy your body. Fear him who is able to destroy your body and soul in hell. But sometimes fear, fear causes us to compromise. And not only that, sometimes ignorance. Hosea said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Sometimes because of our, our lack of understanding or knowledge or our ignorance of God's word, we, we find ourselves compromising and you don't even know that you're compromising. That's why we have to stay in the word and, and the word has to stay in us because you may be compromising uh, on God's commands and you don't even know about it, but you're still held accountable for it. And there are times not only do people compromise out of Christians compromise out of fear and ignorance. One of the biggest reasons why a lot of Christians compromise when it comes to the word of God, it's out of a desire to be accepted by the world. You know, we have an amazing um, <laughs> push, I guess, to be relevant in this world that we live in. You know, we don't want to offend anybody. But even in speaking the truth and love, Jesus offended a lot of folks. There are some folks that did not uh, like Jesus. We need to understand when we stand firm on the word of God, there's some people that are not going to like you. There's some people that are going to reject you because of what you believe. As human beings, we want to feel loved and we want to be accepted. But sometimes that desire uh, for acceptance and that desire for personal gain, popularity, makes us more susceptible uh, to compromising the truth of God's word. What is it for a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? So what, you gain, you're the popular uh, Christian on the job, but have you compromised the truth of God's word in order to, to be that most popular person? Everybody likes you. But well, if everybody's, everybody likes you, maybe it's because you haven't been standing firm on the truth of God's word. And you see this thing called compromise, it happens subtly. You know, we start to make concessions here and there. I'm in church every Sunday. I'm doing this. You know, I'm involved. I'm, I'm serving on the ministries and, and I know what the Bible says and I stand firm in and, and this area, but this other area over here, I compromise. 
I make concessions. Oh, it's not that serious. Uh, you know, that was back then, but this is now. But we need to understand the truth does not change. God's word, his commandments, the God that we serve is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his word is established forever. But the church at Pergamos, Jesus said there were some members there, he said, who had began to, who had compromised the truth. In Revelation 2.14, he said, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak, Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication, so has thou also them that hold fast or hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. In a nutshell, Jesus is saying that you guys are, are putting, you got members in your congregation who hold on to false doctrine and not only hold on and believe in false doctrines, but they encourage others to fall into or believe those false doctrines. These false doctrines are, are doctrines that uh, when he says Balaam, that's something that, that really categorizes a type of belief that is not of God. And anything that, that preaches or teaches, anything that is against the doctrine of Christ is categorized as idolatry and false doctrine. And this type of false doctrine, uh, Jesus is saying that causes members of the church to do things that God does not uh, condone, get into idolatry, and not only idolatry, but to commit fornication as a part of that, that belief system to commit sexual immorality as a part of, so you got members of the church who are holding on to something that is contrary to God's word, to God's command. And they show up in worship every Sunday. They show up in your gatherings every Sunday. Jude talks about this in, in the book of Jude. If we turn over to Jude, there's only one chapter of Jude. Jude chapter one, verses 11, through 13. Look at what Jude says about these types of members, these compromising Christians that are a part of a lot of the congregations, sadly, uh, of the Lord's church. Jude chapter 1, verses 11 through 13. He says, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of the winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. That's how serious God takes false doctrine, y'all. But he said, Judas saying here, and what Jesus is saying in the Revelation, that they were members of the church who had adopted and were compromising and accepting uh, this false doctrine that was against the doctrine or the teachings of Christ. So we need to be aware of that. And so Jesus, after telling them about what they need to fix, <laughs> he gives them the prescription. In Revelation chapter 2, in verse number 16, he says, repent. You got to turn. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. That's what Jesus said. Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them which with the sword of my mouth. And that's usually when he says the sword of my mouth, he's speaking about his word. He says, you got to repent. And see, as children of God, if we find ourselves beginning to compromise the truth of God's word and compromising the commands of God, we need to understand it's time to repent. God calls uh, us to repent when we find ourselves becoming compromising Christians. When, they, when the church gets to the point where we're compromising the truth uh, of God's word, we're no longer the church. We're no longer the people that God has, has called us to be. We're like that salt that Jesus said has lost his savor, is good for nothing, but to be trodden under the foot of men. 
Not only is that true for the church as a whole, but even as individual Christians, when we be begin to compromise and we become compromising Christians, we lose our influence because our influence comes as a result of our holiness and the fact that we, uh, we, we stand with God and we stand for God's word. But when we begin to compromise, we begin to, to lose our influence. We begin to lose our power. And eventually, we become no different from the world. So that's why Paul says in Romans 12, verse number two, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be aware, child of God. Don't allow this world to pressure you into conforming and compromising when it comes to the word of God. Even though you may have to lose some friends or even though you may have to face rejection and you, you may have to face, uh, face abuse and sometimes even persecution, you stand firm on the word of God. Because that's exactly what Jude told those people. In Jude chapter one, verses one, uh, three through four, Jude chapter one, verses three through four. Look at the words of Jude that I believe are relevant to, to Christians even today. Jude chapter one, verses three uh, and four. Jesus said, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered uh, unto the saints. You got to defend the faith. You got to stand firm on that faith, that doctrine that you receive, that you believe. He says, stand firm on it. You got to stand, you got to defend it because you're going to have false doctrine and false teachers and, and Satan himself coming after you. But you got to contend for the faith. You got to stand firm. But there are certain men, he says in verse four, crept in unaware who are uh, before God ordained to this condemnation ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So ultimately, this false doctrine causes you to deny the faith. But Jesus says, stand firm. You got to contend for the faith. Stand firm, child of God. We're living in the last days and the pressure is on. The pressure is on the people of God to conform to this world and to compromise the commands of God. But you got to stand firm. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day that you bless us to be able to see. Father, we thank you for life, health, and strength, and for the mercy and the grace that you continue to show towards us. Father, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise for allowing this, us to see this day we've never seen before and we'll never see again. And on this day, Father, we pray and ask that you give us the strength, the wisdom, and the courage to live for your glory. You've given us this day, Father, and help us to give it back to you and live it in a way uh, that exalts you and honors you, Father, that we may be able to worship you with our lives. And Father, as we begin this day, Father, we pray and ask you, forget, ask you to forgive us for those times when we have compromised the truth of your word in order to be accepted by this world and in order to gain or get gain in this world for personal gain. Sometimes we compromise, Father. And Father, we ask for your forgiveness. And I pray for all those who are under the sound of my voice who recognize that in certain areas and aspects of their lives, Father, that they have not been true to your word. I pray and ask that you forgive us of those times when we made concessions and, and allowed and tolerated certain sins and things to, uh, to take place, not only in our, in our own lives, Father, but we allowed it to occur in the lives of other Christian fathers. But give us a new heart that we might be able to contend for the faith. Give us a, a heart that will allow us to stand firm on your word, even if it means that we get rejected by the world and we get persecuted by the world and, and people don't like us and people don't feel that we are relevant or they feel that we are old fashioned, Father. As long as we're standing with you, Father, that all that's all that matters, Father, because you have always stood with us. You've always been faithful to us. You've kept your promises that you have made and Father, help us to keep the promise that we made to you. 
to be faithful until the very end. So, Father, we just pray that you will look out for every Christian that's joining me in this prayer right now. Father, you know of the temptations and the, uh, the pressure that we face in this world that we live in. Just like, like the Christians at Pergamos who lived in uh, where Satan dwells, Father, in these last days, it seems like we're living in that same area. We know that Satan is the prince of the power of the air of this world, Father. There's spiritual wickedness in high places all around us. But Father, help us not to compromise. Help us not to, uh, to, to begin to make deals with the devil, Father, in order to be accepted and in order to get gained, Father. But bless us as we go through this thing. Give us the strength and the courage we need. Protect us, Father, from all harm, hurt, and danger. Because even though, Father, we you know we ought to obey God rather than man, sometimes this world, because it hates you and because it, it hates us, Father, sometimes the world and the enemy himself will plot against us. But we know, Father, no weapon formed against us shall prosper, even though we may sometimes have to suffer, Father, with rejection and, and persecution. You promise to be with us, Father. You promise to never leave us or forsake us so we can hold on to that assurance. You told us in your word, Father, your word promises us that all things will work together for good for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And we believe that, Father. So, Father, even though it's not easy, we know with your help, we can and we will persevere until the end. And Father, bless us as we go through this thing. We don't know what this day holds for us, but we know you hold this day in your hand. You know our next move before it even comes into our minds. And so Father, we just ask for your protection. We ask that you just lead God and direct us, Father. Give us knowledge, understanding, and wisdom that we need to navigate through this thing in order to, to be obedient to your word, Father. And as you bless us, help us to be a blessing to others. We pray for healing for those who are sick. We pray that you will comfort those who are grieving. And Father, as you uh, see us right now, Father, and you see the prayer requests that have been submitted, even on this day, Father, we pray that you will hear our cry this morning and have mercy on us and answer our prayer requests for ourselves and for others, Father. We pray that you will answer those prayer requests in accordance with your will. And after all is said and done, Father, may we remember to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise so that one day when it's yours to call and ours to answer, we'll be able to hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thank you for Jesus, who is the example for us to follow, who gives us the power to be more than conquerors, who gives us the power to stand firm in a world that pressures us to compromise. It's in Jesus' name that we ask this prayer and we give thanks. Amen. Stand firm, child of God. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. They may call your names, but as long as the Lord calls your name on that day, you're always doing the right thing. You all have a blessed day. Don't forget to join us the next time for a conversation with God. Stand firm, Christians. Take care. No more doctors. No more doctors. I got my. I used to take the pump, but I had to come. Okay, do you feel it better today, right? The medicine not making you feel bad, right? You feel it better? They changed the medicine. They changed the medicine. You literally got the needle right here. They shot you in the arm with the stick needle. Did it hurt? Did you cry? You cry? Yeah, it's big, man. It's okay. Sometimes you gotta cry. Sometimes you gotta cry. I'm oh, literally gotta take you to a doctor. Leon, you better not Leon got. Oh, literally gotta take you to a doctor. Mildred, why do you keep interrupting me? Why do you have to go to the doctor right now? No, literally gotta take me to doctor. That thing in two, uh, two, two, two weeks. For right, now. Yeah, you gotta wait your turn. Leon, you ain't here. You ain't here with us today.
Okay, go to these from there. Or go to your security post. And nobody so came. Is he supposed to be here? Normally he's not. And nobody came. Leon, are you in this class? Are you supposed to be in this class all the time? Leon, are you supposed to be in this class all the time? Where, I, I've asked you this before. Where are you normally supposed to be? The peace room or the security post? Well, I'm not even doing any of those stuff anymore. Okay, so you're going to be in here with us? Yes. Okay, now if you're going to be in here with us, here's one rule you got to know. You can't sleep like that. Okay, you got to participate. In certain parts, you got to participate. The only time you can fall asleep is during meditation because meditation is going to relax you and cause you to fall asleep. I will not penalize you for that. But if you the other times, you got to stay awake. You in here with us now. You're in the thick of it. Welcome to team. Y'all clap for Leon. Leon to the team. Yeah. Janet, clap for Leon with them loud bangers. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Welcome to the team, Leon. Leon, how you feeling? Good. Yeah? Got a nice little nap in there, huh? I don't blame you. Sometimes you tired. How was your weekend? My weekend was good. What did you do? Well, nothing really. But, um, Stay home? Yeah. So it was a home type weekend. Sometimes it was a really good weekend. You don't go anywhere, you just stay home, maybe watch TV, just sit around and just relax. It's good for you, it builds you up on your side. Last but not least, you didn't think I was gonna see you back here, I always see you. How you doing, Miss Mary? Miss Mary, y'all, this is Miss Mary right here, this is my friend. How are you feeling today? She says she's feeling terrific. She has never told me that she's feeling bad, I like it. What'd you do this weekend? You ain't clean? I, I know you like to clean. You didn't clean this weekend? She ain't do nothing but watch TV. So she had a relaxing, a relaxing weekend. All right, you guys, let's talk a little bit before I turn it over to the capable hands of Ms. Lowry. Yes, sir. So all of you had really good weekends. Yes. You were in. None of your weekends involved stress or pressure. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Step outside. No. None of your weekends involve pressure or stress. When you guys have good weekends like that, it is important to remember that. Use that to help you get through the week. Because you know being at Rayfield can be stressful with having to work in the peace room or until 6. Maybe you're teaching a class or you're working in the class. Maybe you're learning something new. Uh, there are a lot of moving parts. You know, we're getting close to the holidays. There are a lot of announcements and updates. It's just a lot that goes on, right? So you can get stressed easily. Doesn't mean it's from anything bad, but you can still get stressed. Use the good time you had on the weekend, whether it was relaxing watching TV, like Miss Mary, or visiting a friend, like you did, or um, staying home and just doing much of nothing. Whatever it is, use that good energy to push you through this week. It's important, okay? Again, a lot is gonna be happening and you do not wanna let yourself get stressed out. It will upset your physical health, and what else? Your what other My health? Mental health. Your mental, mental health. health. Your mental health. And we have to always stay um, responsible with our mental health. Yeah. Doesn't mean we can fix everything, but we can control certain things. We can control how much pressure we take on, how much stress we got take on, mm. how loud we write when we write right. on a paper. <laughs> it's writing so loud. What is you writing? Oh, I like this. So even though Janet is distracted from what the current moment is. I do like what she's working on. So she has this paper here. I'm not going to tell you what it says entirely, but it's a list of things that she's grateful for. Yes. Thank you. Stop writing so loud. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, it's important that you guys do everything you can to take care of yourselves. Who's responsible for your health? You is. You. You, you is? I mean, we is. No. We is? <laughs> Every S is getting worse. <laughs> Janet, you are, we are. You are. Yeah. You are. <laughs> now you say he is, she is, oh. it is, but it's you are or oh. we are. Oh. Oh. Thank you. And it's what I I what? I am. I is. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am. So it's important that you, who is responsible for your mental health, take care of your oh, mental yeah. health. Are you recording? Yeah. No, ma'am. Please don't. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is the only camera that we're recording here because it does go to Dr. Carter. We don't know where the other videos go, so let's not record in these sessions, okay? Sorry. As I was saying, you're fine. As I was saying, you are responsible for your mental health, okay? Whether that's taking the right amount of medicine, whether that's getting the right amount of sleep, not eating bad. Let me tell you what I did. Let me tell you what I did this weekend. So I went to the Rayfield Food Pantry, and do you know what I got? Food. Food from the food pantry. I got a bunch of fruit mm. and vegetables. Oh, wow. yes. I got dragon fruit, cucumbers, mm. grapes, 
uh, pineapple. Mm. What else did I get? Uh, tangerines. I had some nectarines from the previous week. Bananas. I had a bunch of fruit. And you know what I've been doing? Yesterday, Saturday, and this morning. Get up. I cut up the fruit, put it in a bowl, have some fruit. Then for lunch, I might have some chicken or a burger. But I only have one burger, not two, not three, not four. That's a lot of bad meat, right? We call that burgers, pork, we call that red meat. But chicken is healthier. And guess what? I'm very specific. You leave it just like that? You're not going to take your paper? You're just going to leave it? <laughs> Have a good day. Okay, sir. But the chicken is really healthy. And I specifically choose the healthiest types of chicken. The healthiest type of chicken is skinless, boneless chicken breast, right? It has the least amount of fat. Do you need to go to the bathroom? Do you need to go to the bathroom? No, okay, then I need you to wait. I need you to wait. I need you to wait. Don't try to overtalk me. Don't try to overtalk me. Don't try to overtalk me. I need you to wait. If it's not for the bathroom, hold your question, hold your comment. I will let you go. But give me a minute. So as I was saying, the healthiest type of meat chicken is skinless, boneless chicken breast, right? I made sure to get that. And I cooked it. Hold on, we're going to wait on Mildred to come back. You, you, you back with us? Mildred, you back with us? Thank you. Okay. She'll be out there when you dismiss so you can tell her then, okay? So I made sure to get the healthy chicken and I cooked it all. Cooked some rice with it. All these healthy foods. And you not know, yesterday I got up, went to church, had all this energy. Today, got up, went to Miami for another project, had all this energy. Why? Because I was eating right. And the good foods that I was eating was also helping my mental health. When I have too much sugar, I'm hyper. Or I actually can get more stressed. When I have too much salt, I'm making my body work harder, which is gonna affect my mental health. Damn. So I made good choices about what I was eating and drinking. I also have a jug of juice. Um, I got it from my sister. She had already drank some of the juice, whatever. And I finished it a long time ago, but I said, I'm gonna keep the jug and I'm gonna just keep filling it up with water. So make sure I get the right amount of water every day. Yeah. And by me getting water, you know what water does inside? It flushes out all the, so a lot of the bad stuff. So, you so that your blood and your other body parts function better, yeah. which helps your brain function. Yeah. You know what's inside of our head with our brain? Liquid. Yeah. And guess what? If we're not drinking enough water, our body started to become dehydrated. Yeah. Your yeah. brain needs all the liquid it's supposed to have. Yeah. Your yeah. heart your kidneys, yes. your stomach, your body needs all the liquid it's supposed you to have. So that liquid. means, stop interrupting me, that means drinking the right stuff, eating the right stuff. Fruits and vegetables have a lot of water in it. So that helps you, but also has a lot of fiber, which helps with moving stuff through your body, right? And then chicken, fish has a lot of protein that helps with your muscles. And then you gotta get your calcium, which helps with your bones. You gotta take those vitamins that help with your joints. That way, when you're moving, every time you take a step, you don't hear your joints pop. Raise your hand if when you go to walk, you hear stuff popping in your body. It happens to me sometimes. Yeah. That's not just about what you're eating, but it's also about how much you move. Raise your hand if you sit down a lot, a lot, a lot, in front of the TV, at the computer, uh, on the bus, in the car. Yeah, yeah. A lot of us, we sit down. That means, and one of the reasons why when I present, I'm always up front or I'm always walking around, because I sit too much at the computer, but when I'm in here with y'all presenting, I get to stand up, I get to stretch, I get to work my body and get my body moving, which also helps what move? Something in our body that keeps us alive needs to move. What's it called? Uh-huh. Wait, stop yelling out. Go ahead, Jasmine. Like, like, um, ow. It's a liquid in our body and it's red. What is it called? Blood. 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 It's it. important to stay moving and stretching so that blood can flow through because blood carries oxygen, which your body needs. It carries oxygen to important parts of your body, including your brain, but it also carries out toxins and carbon dioxide, which your body doesn't need, right? Yeah. I'll tell you something else that you need to make sure you're doing. It's going to sound funny or it's going to sound disgusting, but I need to make sure you understand. So we all in here burp or we fart or pooped or pass gas. It's important that your body does that naturally. If you're not doing it naturally, that could be a problem. Could be the wrong things you're eating, right? But your body has to get rid of certain things, right? So don't hold those things in. I know there's some people that like to hold that stuff in. Don't hold that stuff in. And make sure you eat the right stuff and that you're going to the bathroom regularly. Go to the bathroom regularly. If you're only going to poop once a week, that could be a problem. Talk to your doctor. Make sure you're eating the right stuff. Because guess what? 
if your stomach is digesting and your intestines is pushing out the bad stuff and your blood is moving all the bad oxygen out and your body is continuing to pump out all the bad stuff, you have a healthier body. But if that stuff gets locked up in there and trapped and can't get out, you become sick. And then you go from sick to sicker. And then from sicker to sickest. And then from there, bad news. So always, always take care of your body because it also helps your mental health. Fred, what did you want to say? Uh, I like to say, did you, did you, did you, did you, did you ever try in turtle stew? Turtle stew? Yeah. I don't think so, but I've had turtle. I ain't never had it, but I've had turtle, and that's good, too. Mildred, what did you want to say? Of all the things you kept yelling out, what did you want to say? I want to say... When I when I go to when I go back this time, they're gonna they're gonna take the tube out and they're gonna put it back in. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question, Mildred. You eating healthy? Uh, or, you, or 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 could you or would you say it could be better? It could I, be better. You it could be better. better. Okay. But so, little, little something I eat a lot of rice. I right, eat a lot. Of, right. I eat a lot of rice a lot. I'm glad you said that. That's another point, you guys. Everybody repeat after me. Moderation. 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 I ain't hear everybody. Moderation. 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 David, say it. Moderation. Cindy, say it. Mo what? Cindy, say it. Okay, Kyle, say it. Moderation. Miss Elaine, say it. Moderation. Say it. Moderation. Say it. Moderation. Uh, everybody say the word moderation. So moderation is an important word when it comes to what we eat and what we drink. Right, yeah. Not everything is bad. A lot of stuff is good. But too much of something can hurt you or kill you. Is water good for you? Yeah. Is too much water good for you? No. Because no. 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 what happens when you when you have too much water? You drown. do what? You drown. You yeah. drown. Yeah. So yeah. moderation is important. That's not only with what's outside the body, what's inside. Yo, too brandy. much oxygen isn't good for you, right? Blandly. Too much oxygen isn't good. But um, not only that, uh, too much carbon dioxide is bad for you. That's the stuff we breathe out, right? We got to make sure that we have everything in our lives in moderation. The good, the bad, the and, ugly. Yeah. Meaning, you like juice? Raise your hand. You like juice? I love juice. Give me juice. anything from Tropicana except grapefruit juice. I, I love, love juice. juice. Ooh, me too. Uh, Ooh. I know. Which is why I have it in moderation. Yes. I go to the and get two things of juice. Mm -hmm. And I drink it. Why you need two things of juice? Get you one and spread it out over the week. Moderation. Say it. Say it. Moderation. What? Moderation. Okay, you said it right. Moderation. You don't need two. Get one and spread it out over the week. Not yes, ma'am. Get two. A lot of people think because juice comes from fruits and vegetables that that's what makes it healthy, and it is healthy, nice. but it has so much concentrated sugar in it. Everybody say concentrated. 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 And what Miss <laughs> What Miss Lori is talking about when we say concentrated. You know how when you go in the kitchen and you maybe you open up the bleach, mm -hmm. right? Let's say you pour too much bleach in the dishwater or in the bucket and you feel how slippery it feels. It's extra, extra, extra stuff. That's the concentration of everything, right? Mm -hmm. of, of the bleach. Same thing with the food. If you're getting your juice from a bottle, it's important to know what's on the label. In those bottles, like Ms. Lori said, a lot of sugar is added. Why do they add sugar? Because they want you to keep buying it more and more and more. But if you're eating of the fruit or eating the vegetable, like from the tree, if you're eating it in its actual state, the way it is, then you're gonna get the right amount there, right? They didn't add sugar to grapes. They didn't add sugar to the plums. But if you go in and you're getting plum juice and grape juice, yeah, they probably added to that. Cindy, what's up? Carrot juice, carrot juice. If you ain't getting it from the carrot, they probably added juice to it. Cause have you ever eaten a carrot? But you've eaten carrots, right? And you've had carrot juice. Which one is sweeter, the carrot juice or the carrot? Right, you know why it's sweeter? Because they added that sugar to it. They added that sugar. And here's the worst part about sugar. Sugar actually comes from a plant. Who knows what plant sugar comes from? A scarberry. No, ma'am, and stop yelling out. Yes, sir. Sugar cane. Sugar cane, everybody say sugar cane. Sugar cane. Now you, what state do you guys live in? We all live in? Florida. 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 And in Florida, they grow sugar cane. cane. Yes, yeah. man. Where we hey, guess what? I eat that too. You eat sugar cane? Yeah. Don't eat the sugar cane. You're supposed to suck the sugar out of the sugar cane and then I throw it know. out. Don't eat the cane, girl. <laughs> so listen, here's the thing about sugar cane. Why I gotta eat the cane? Don't eat the cane. It's not for Why? your body. It's not meant for you to eat. 
So I don't eat. It. I take the juice out of it. Right, take the juice out of it and then spit the rest out. So here's the thing about um, sugar cane. The sugar that comes from a sugar cane is natural sugar. Just like the salt that comes from the ocean is natural salt. But, excuse me, but what they do is they add things to it that make it worse and less healthy. That's why brown sugar is healthier than white sugar, right? right? So, but either way, whether you have brown sugar or white sugar, sea salt or iodized salt, the point is moderation. Have everything in the right amount. Notice that when we give y'all snacks in the afternoon, we don't give y'all huge snacks. So yeah, when, no, Cindy, when I asked Cindy no, to give Fred um, the chips because he couldn't have sweets, I told her not to give him a lot. Not only did we need to spread the snack out, but Fred also needed to have it in moderation. What is it? What's there a lot of in chips that's not good for you? It's a lot of what? It's a lot of salt. It's a lot of salt. salt. Yeah. Salt. And salt can help cause too much salt in your body can help cause your pressure to build. build Ever heard of a person having a heart attack? Yes. Or stroke, yes. high blood pressure, yeah. Yeah. hypertension, yeah. Yeah. bad for you. And they also affect your mental health. Yes. There are people who were high functioning, they were considered normal before their stroke. Then they had a stroke and now they have a lifelong disability. You see how your body can affect your mental health? Yeah. It's important. Rowena and Dave Mildred. Yes. Um, I got that too. Yeah. Yeah. It's important to care yourself. That's why I was in the hospital. That's right, but you out and you back to normal. You're going to be all right. I like it. Yeah. Mildred. Um, well, I got I got hard blood pressure. My mama had it, so and I you, got it. And you eating a lot of salt still? And fats and bacon and burgers? Yeah. Listen, you got to cut that down because if you don't, you're going to make that high blood pressure you already have. You're going to make it worse. You guys, there's another word. Hold on, Fred. Don't forget your point. There's another word I want to tell you. It's called hereditary. Everybody say hereditary. Hereditary. Mildred, say it. Hereditary. No, it's not hereditary. I knew you were going to say it right away. I said, make it say it. Hereditary. Why hereditary? Huh? Huh? Hereditary. Hereditary. Close enough. Say hereditary. Say hereditary. 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 Hey, say hereditary. Kyle, say it. You want me to say it again for you? Hereditary. Her. Hereditary. You know, you know the teacher in 202, what's her name? That's Miss Who? Miss Terry. You can say Terry. You can say her, right? Your girlfriend is a her. Now you got her, you got Terry. And then you got what's in the middle? It. Say it. All right, say duh. All right, now say hereditary. Hereditary. Okay, so hereditary means this is something that's passed down from generation to generation or is passed down through the family. David, hold on. Hold on, David. This is stuff that you're born with. Mildred shared that she's got high blood pressure. Her mother had it, so it was probably passed down. It's hereditary. It's in her physical makeup. There are some things we're going to be born with. All right, there are some things we're going to be born with because it's in our family. Those are things that most of the time we can't really fix, all right? But there are things that we can fix, or we can keep it from getting worse. So you said high blood pressure is hereditary. The way you keep it from getting worse is you can't have all them burgers, Mildred. You can't get the triple quarter pounder with cheese and no, bacon on the I get, side. I get, I get a double stack. You can't get the double stack no more. You got to get the one stack. You can't get the fries with the extra salt. You got to say, listen, put a little bit of salt in there for, for flavor, but don't tell them put the extra. You know what I'm saying? Well, you can't you can't have the bacon and the cheese. And the burger. Lily bought me bacon with my food. You gotta tell Lily, you gotta tell Lily, Lily, I can't have both. I gotta make good choices because I'm hereditary. You gotta tell that. When she say, why you can't, you say I'm a hereditary. She's like, what does that mean? That means my mom has some stuff. I got it. I gotta be careful what I eat. So I'm trying to take care of my mental health and my physical health. Yeah, I gotta be you careful. You can't what I have eat. the salt fish with the catfish. You can't have them both fried. You gotta have moderation. Say, moderate. you, bro, say moderation. Say moderation. I wanna make sure you know it. Say moderation. 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 Say it one more time so I know you know it. Moderation. That means you can't have everything all the time. You gotta have a little bit here, a little bit there. Why eat boiled food? That's good for me. Okay, like chicken. Wait, wait. Boiled chicken, what else? I eat a lot of, of vegetables. Okay, oh, okay. You're doing all right. Good stuff, good stuff. Now listen, because vegetables have the fiber, that helps your digestion. You can't have all that salt. You can't have bacon and cheese and a triple quarter pounder and a double stack and the five stack. You can't. It's too much. You gotta have a little bit. And here's another thing, you guys. I'm gonna tell you. This will help you save money and help your health. You know how you go and you get the full meal when you go to a restaurant. 
Yeah. You don't have to finish the full meal right there. Because you can take your food to do what? To home. You can take your food to Geo. Take your food to go. To go. You. Take your food to go, which means maybe you eat half of it at the restaurant. Like, let's say you go out for lunch. You eat half your meal at the restaurant for lunch. And, and maybe you save the rest for dinner. Dinner. That not only saves you money, but it keeps you from taking it all in in one meal. Because if you finish the whole meal there, for lunch, right? Let's say it's a burger with fries and a soda and a dessert. You finish it off for lunch, Maybe then I'm you home. might eat bad for dinner. Now you're yeah. eating double, triple, yeah. making your body work harder. Right. But if you split those meals up, you might be helping yourself. Yeah. Yes, sir. Before you talk, you put your mask on. Now talk to me. Hey, Ms. Vanessa. Um, Do you need one of us? Um, afterwards, I'll see you. Me? After. Okay, cool. Talk to me, Fred. I'm none of my brother. Your brother? Yeah. What about him? Tell me about your brother. He thought that was some water. Mm, and he drank the wrong thing. Yeah. He got he, sick, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, sure did. Uh, well, he drank uh, uh, the gallon of the bleach. Oh, my goodness. But he all right now, though, right? Mm-hmm. He learned how to just be picking up stuff and drinking it. Huh? You better tell y'all something. Don't just be picking up anything and drinking. You never know. You heard that? Yeah. Remember times I thought I was drinking something it looked like juice? They got this cleaning stuff called Fabuloso. Anybody heard of Fabuloso? Smell yeah, real good. That. That's what they use at Rayfield when they be cleaning up. That thing looked like juice in the bottle. You drank it. And I bet you ain't going to treat you like juice. Yeah, in, the in, that, in that hospital, in that bathroom all night. Yeah. And enough toilet paper for what you're going to go through. No. You back? You yeah. sure you back? Yeah, I'm okay. How you know you back? I just went there. Okay, and then you came back. Yeah, I you sure you back? I have to watch my hands. Because you keep telling me you back. I'm going to make sure you know you're back. Let's mess with you, Daddy. Wash your hands with soap and bleach and fire. Okay. <laughs> yes, Miss Elaine, talk to us. How about make your own juice, like your own carrot juice? Get a juicer mm-hmm. with carrots and celery mm-hmm. and beets and apples. And That's a good point. That's a great point. Thank you for saying that. That's something you can do. If you have a blender or a juicer, like Miss uh, Elaine said, you get, you, you get some raw vegetables and fruits, you put them in that juicer. You put them in that blender and let it become juice. If you use the blender, you strain off the other stuff and just let the liquid flow out. But that's healthy too. You can do strawberries. You can do strawberries, raspberries, berries. all the berries. And um, you know that that, that, that thing you can milk. do um 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 what it called? Um, I don't know what it's called. You tell me. It's that green thing. Celery, lettuce. No. Grapes. No. T-shirt, cause a shirt green. No. What green thing is you talking about? The green thing is... Mildred, think about it and I'm going to come back to you. Kyle, what you going to say? Oh. For what? Um, you sure you need to go? Yeah. Oh, you can go. God. You don't remember the green thing? It's like green yogurt. yogurt. Yogurt is good for you, too. Yeah, it's green. And, um, and, um, pen, 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 you guys, let me ask y'all something. Raise your hand if you heard of the word bacteria. Is Jasmine, is bacteria good or bad? It's bad. bad. Is bacteria good or bad? Bad. Is it bad or good? Bad. Bad or good? Bad, bad or good? Bad. David, is bacteria good or bad? Bad. Miss Mary, is bacteria good or bad? bad? It's actually both, you guys. It's both. Think of it all depends on which bacteria you have. Yogurt actually has bacteria in it that are good for you because those bacteria don't make you sick. They actually help your stomach break down the foods you've eaten. It helps break down other things. So those are good bacteria. Sometimes they're called cultures, but it's called good bacteria. I'll name one. There's one, I believe it is a bacteria, it's called, it's a science name, but it's called Bifidus regularis, right? Big name, right? But Bifidus regularis is in, is in a, uh, it's in, oh my gosh, it's either in Yoplait or Dan Active, but that helps with your digestion. But then you got bacteria like E. coli, which is bad for you. You have bacteria from, uh, I believe salmonella is a bacteria. Bad. It's bad for you. So there are bacteria that are bad for you, but there are also bacteria that are good for you. I saw your look on your face. I know this is new for you, but there are bacteria. Science is, this is a science thing, but there are good bacteria and bad bacteria. Bacteria is everywhere. Mildred, you covered in bacteria, you know that? Yeah. Yes, she is. Your yeah. hand, your face, your mouth, bacteria. Yeah. Y'all's mouth, all of our mouths. 
That's why we gotta brush our Hold teeth. Oh, oh, That's why we gotta on. brush our teeth. Hold on. Full of bacteria. But there are good bacteria in our mouth. And there are bad bacteria. Where do we get the bad bacteria from normally? Yes, Jasmine. Night. Okay, Jared. Sorry, in our mouths. Where do we get that bacteria from? For the plug. For that, like, for like, hands. No, ma'am. Where do we normally get it from? I, I know where we get it from. No, you touch on things with your mouth. No. Good chat. Where you put your hands That's down. where you get bacteria on your hand from and then put it in your mouth. But where do we normally get bad bacteria from? From the, how about the food? From the food. Because that's the number one thing we put in our mouths, right? We always eating stuff. Yes. And what happens is, raise your hand if you got teeth. Even if you got one tooth, raise your hand. I got eight teeth. Everybody here should be raising their hand. I know you got teeth. I got eight teeth. David, you got teeth? I got eight teeth. Oh, teeth yeah, you got teeth. I, I got saw your teeth. teeth. Raise I your hand. Eight. I got eight. Raise your hand if you have teeth. I got eight teeth. Everybody has teeth. Have got, teeth. I now, got eight teeth. Now, Mildred, I heard you all 39 times you told me you have eight teeth. Everybody, for the record, Mildred wants y'all to know she got eight teeth. All right? No more than that, no less. She got eight teeth, not seven. It, we know uh, now, Mildred. Yeah. Told you about yelling out now. What, Fred? I don't have none. You ain't got no teeth? No, I, I thought none. you had teeth. Oh, my bad. Yeah, Everybody got teeth know. except Fred. <laughs> now, Fred don't experience, uh, Fred, actually, you will experience what I'm about to say. So, everybody here has teeth, right? What is between our teeth? Naturally, what is between our teeth? Food. No. Um. What's between my teeth right now? You see it all over. What's between my teeth? Yes, Jasmine. Um, Say it again. Space. Space. Right. space is between our teeth. Some of us have a big space between our teeth. And little Others space. have little space. The smaller the space is, the more likely food gets stuck in there. Yeah. You ever heard about flossing? Yeah. That's why yeah. important to floss because yeah. the floss gets the teeth, the food out. out. But floss, I mean, but food that we eat can help cause plaque. Mm. If the plaque stays there, whether we miss it when we brush or floss, that plaque can hold bacteria. That plaque then leads to other things like gingivitis, gum disease, These our teeth begin to break down, right? Now. Infections. But for the people that don't have teeth, what are, what's the part What's this part of your face called, Fred? What are these, Fred? Jaw. Is your name Fred? I, I'm not joking with you. Stop yelling out. It's for him to answer. What are these called? And it's not jaws. What are these called, Fred? Jaw. It's your chin. What are these? Yep. Rowena. Rowena, you leaving? Your cheeks. Your cheeks. Cheeks, right. Uh, uh, Melinda. Oh, oh, Melinda. Okay, so in your cheeks, right, between in, on your face, for somebody who doesn't have teeth, you have your gum line, which also has your bone, and you have your cheek. Food gets stuck inside your cheeks. Food also gets stuck inside the front and back of your mouth where the space is tighter, even though there are no teeth. And that food can lead to bacteria, which is why it's important that whatever the dentist has told you to do for you, that you do it. Brush, floss, rinse, all that. Food can cause bacteria. So there, back to my original point, there are good bacteria and there are bad bacteria. Yes, sir. Uh, and then my What about your sister? Got me back on eating all that right. You got that right, it's done. You gotta eat what's right, you gotta eat what's right. All right, um, last person, Mildred, go ahead and talk. What you want to say? I, I want to say, um, when I go to my doctor, he told me, I go to my doctor, I'll buy, I'll buy a good report. Yes. All right, y'all, listen, I have to go to my meeting now, so I'll go ahead and give y'all a short break. When Miss Lori says come back in, come back in. If I come over and find out that she had to talk to anybody, you're going to have a personal problem with me, okay? I appreciate y'all attention. The same respect you give me, we want to make sure we give it to Miss Lori. Okay. What? What you want for my life? Oh, we got questions. Okay, today we're going to increase our positive self-talk. And we're gonna think about ourselves. You're gonna think about who you are, what you do, how you act, how you make other people feel, how it feels to be you. And you're gonna give yourself some self-talk. And positive self-talk can help us create a more optimistic outlook which can also improve our mental and physical health. 
Some great examples are gratitude and life satisfaction, improved immune function, reduced pain, better physical well-being, less stress, and distress. And remember, we said we want to be less stressed as we can. So when we engage in positive self-talk, we may be better able to solve problems, think differently, and have increased coping strategies to navigate or go around hardships or challenges, which can uh, reduce the harmful effects of stress and anxiety. Who has anxiety? Who knows what anxiety is? Yeah, anxiety is, you feel anxious and a little uh, 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 about too, everything. You feel too anxious. Yeah, I mean, it just goes all through you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, like, yes, like, like you get upset, you cry, you have emotions, like you feel down. Or it could, it can make you. It, it, it can, because I that. have that. Yeah. Everybody has it. It can make you, it can like make you that. Right now. You could cry right this minute, right? No. What's wrong, honey? You want to cry right now? I have anxiety right now. I just hope tops come on time so I can get to the bank before it closes. I have to take care of stuff. I don't want to have overdraft or things like that. I have anxiety because you have to pay money. You know? Well, go. Can't you go or you have to wait on the tops? Can you go so you don't have anxiety? Yeah, I do have anxiety about making sure my bank account's okay, that it's not overdraft. Right, that'll do. That'll make you anxiety. I don't like paying bank fees. Mm -hmm, that's right. So identify, identify negative self-talk traps. Certain scenarios may increase our self-doubt and lead to more negative self-talk. Like, let's say, what do you need, David? You got to go to the men's room? Yeah. You just came back from there. Go ahead and come back. Okay. Um, like if you have a large social gathering, like when we go to the red and white ball and we're all dressed up and everything, and then we think maybe something's going to happen to our dress and we're going to mess up our dress and then everybody's going to be laughing at us and then if everybody's laughing at us, it's going to make us feel bad. We're going to be embarrassed. We want to go home, but we can't go home because what? Because the top's going to come. Take them home. Right. There you go. There you go, Mildred. But you should answer when you're called on. Raise their hand. Yes, Fred? And then I remember that you were uh, and, and come out front. I want to go home. I want to go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the anxious, and it makes you that that that's that self talk telling her, "I want to go." You you want to go home. You want to go home. No matter what you say to her, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do the other. Her mind is telling her she wants to go home, and she wants to go home right then. And you have to wait for tops and everything, and she's building up anxiety, anxiety. And that's what we all can do. It can happen to any of us. Thank you. So um, pinpointing when you would experience the most negative self-talk can help you anticipate the negativity and prepare to transform it to positive self-talk. So. When you say we're going to the red and white ball, I've got on my best dress, I look so nice. Then the idea comes to you that you're going to eat some food and it's going to fall on the front of your dress and then you're going to be embarrassed. No, I know how to eat my food because I have okay. table manners. And I, yes, Mildred. I have table manners, I know how to eat and not raise food on my dress. Right, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yes, Fred. And I think all we can means when I eat napkin, I to put it up in my lap. Right, and I know how to put the napkin in my lap. There you go. So, that in my chair. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, so here you you tell yourself, yes, Jasmine. Like, like 
like what you were saying about the um white and white um uh, like red and white ball like like when I eat like when I eat like I clean my hands I wipe my hands right, or yeah. wash my hands with soap when I finish eating right you know that I are, know my table manners you know your own table manners and you're like no I'm not gonna I'm I ain't gonna, gonna waste worry about my dress. I'm so. not gonna worry about mm -hmm. wasting it on myself. Nope. I'm gonna be be just fine. Yes. And you trap. Then you um trans. And yeah, because this is a happy time. It's for a me. happy time. And, and, then, and then you turn it into a positive self talk. And you check in with your feelings. Stop during events or bad days and evaluate your self talk. It's a becoming negative. How can you turn it around? Yes. Like, you can turn it around like that. Thanksgiving, you know, Thanksgiving coming, everybody was going to be drinking and getting drunk and have an accident in the street. Cars going to, cars going to, um, they're going to have a wreck. Yeah. They're going to be getting drunk. Yeah, well, you know that's going to happen. But you know, you know, even the police know that's going to happen gonna be some people just drinking on the road whatever so what do you do you don't drink so much that you can't drive you take care of yourself so that you know that you're a good driver that if anything happens you can navigate the the road you know that or you don't go out at all you stay at home and eat your dinner there yes yeah. let me finish what we're doing or we'll never get to our our other things so you find the humor in it. Laughter can relieve stress and tension when you need a boost for positive self-talk. Find ways to laugh at things like watching funny animal videos or listening to a comedian. So when you have negative self-talk in your head, go turn on something funny. Like cartoons. Like the cartoons, right, very good. Surround yourself with positive people. Whether or not you noticed it, you can absorb the views and perspectives and emotions of people around you. So choose to surround yourself with positive people when you can. Wasn't Dr. Carter talking about this, this just this morning? She yes. say, she say, Ms. Carter say, when she had us in the meeting, when she had us in the meeting, she say, we got to know how to act. We got to know how to act when we come to church. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, Fred. I, I just asked you a, a question. What is it? It is now. If a drunk will come to your house, what do you better do with that drunk and you get drunk and want to start fighting? Well, if you can help it, you don't let him come to your house. You tell him, don't come here acting a fool now. Stay at home if you're going to act like that. And if you know that a person is going to drink and drink and drink till they act a fool, then you start taking the alcohol away from them early. And then if you know they're so drunk they can't drive, then you call for an Uber for them so that they can go on Uber and they can leave their car there. If they want to fight when they're, dry, when they're um, drunk, I tell you, there's nothing like calling the police on them. And if you call the police on them, then they won't do that again. I bet you they won't, or they won't come to your house on Thanksgiving anymore. Wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me, let me get, because we got a lot. I got some stuff for y'all. I got some stuff. All right. Give yourself positive affirmations. Sometimes seeing positive words or inspiring images can be enough to redirect your thoughts. The use of positive affirmations, statements that can have a positive impact on your brain, as well as your day-to-day -day thoughts, can help to shift our thoughts, which can in turn increase our use of positive self-talk. Consider posting small reminders in your bedroom, in your school locker, and anywhere you sit, spend significant amount of time. I am beautiful. I like people. People like me back. Things like that. Also consider the following examples of ways to increase positive self-talk in the classroom. Start the day with positive statements as a greeting. 
create an affirmation wall in the classroom. Create an emotional word that um, it includes affirmations. Ask students to uh, share one positive self-talk statement, which we're going to do in a few minutes. Create a soundtrack, asking students to create a playlist of songs that are positive in nature. We can do that later. Not today, but later as well. Okay. Um, if the negative thought comes, I'll disappoint everyone if I change my mind. The positive could say, I have the power to change my mind. Others will understand. If the negative self-talk says, I feel and embarrass myself, the positive can say, I'm proud of myself for even trying. That took courage. If the negative says, I'm overweight and out of shape, I might as well not bother. Believe me, I do that so many days. Oh, my clothes. I have so many clothes in my closet and they are so beautiful. And I just think, you know, I am not even going to swear that anywhere because I'm too fat. Well, that's just not the way to think. The thing to think is, look, I'm going to put that on and I'm going to be jazzy no matter how fat I am. You know, that's right. right. Come on, isn't that how I should think? Um, I've never done this before. It's a negative thought. I've never done this before and I don't think I'll like it, I'll be bad at it. The positive is this is a wonderful opportunity for me to learn from others and grow. The negative is there's just no way that that will work. The positive is I can and will give it all and make it work. So we're gonna do some positive affirmation. Hello students, Miss Amanda here. We are sailing through September, learning the Bill of Rights at Rayfield. We have spoken of two of the rights so far. First right we spoke of was the right to see a doctor. Then we spoke on the right, you have the right to go to church. Today, we will be speaking on the right to talk. You have the right to talk. You have that right. There are times to talk and there's a time to be quiet and to listen. For example, when you are in school and you're learning, the teacher is teaching, you should always be paying attention and listening to what the teacher is saying because it is so much to learn when you are not talking. You have the right to ask questions, to talk about what and how you are feeling. You have the right to talk to someone about things that you may need, things you may need help with. Talk to someone if you are being abused, neglected, in any kind of way. Always talk to someone when someone is hurting you. Someone is abusing you and neglecting you. Not giving you your medication, giving you too much medication. You have the right to talk. You have that right. You have the right to speak up. You have a voice. Use it and be heard. Sometimes you might need to express how you are feeling about something that 
not if that's something that is bothering you. You need to speak on how you are feeling about something. Express yourself by talking about it. Students, there are many things to talk about, and you have the right to talk about them. Don't be silent. You got a voice. Use it. Remember, if you don't talk about things that is bothering you, about things you need, things you won't like or dislike, no one will know what you are in need of. Ah, uh, what is your opinions? No one will know what you're thinking. What is your opinion if you don't open your mouth and talk? You have the right to talk. So use your rights. Use your voice so everyone can know what you are thinking, how you are thinking, and know what your opinions are. I'm going to repeat to you the three bills of rights that we have already discussed so far here at Rayfield. And there will be many more to come as the weeks go, go along. So pay attention. So far, again, I will tell you students, we have spoken on the rights to go to church. We have spoken on the right that you need to see a doctor or that you can see a doctor. We have spoken on those rights. Again today, we have spoken on the right to talk, to open your mouth, voice your opinion. Let your voice be heard. Don't let no one abuse you. Don't let no one neglect you. Open your mouth. Let your voice be heard so people can know what is going on with you. No one have the right to tell you to shut up when you is in need of help. Pay attention to the Bill of Rights. We here at Rayfield, we want to make sure that all of you know all of your Bill of Rights, not some of them, but we want you to know all of your Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights today again, you have the Bill of Right to talk. That is the end of class today on the Bill of Rights. I'll see you next week. i see you with a brand new bill. So still, like I told you before, pay attention to the Bill of Rights because we will be asking you to recite those bills to us because we here at Rape Bill wants to make sure that all you students know your rights. See you next week. Love you and have a great, great 